The story is told of a preacher who announced to his members the funeral service of an unknown person that was going to be held. The congregation came in good numbers and the preacher, he preached his heart out. It is sad that the man in this casket is so sinful and so corrupt that there is no doubt he is going to hell. This, unfortunately, is a good example of a very wicked and uncaring person, the preacher said. As is typical at occasions like this, there was much soberness and a lot of weeping. Although this minister often preached along similar lines of the need for responsible living, holiness, and a focus on et eternal values within the context of his normal Sunday sermons, people hardly see themselves as lost and heading for hell, nor do they feel the urgency of any need to change their way of life when they hear such teachings in a celebration service as most Sunday services often are. At a funeral service, however, you can capture people's attention more. The preacher closed his sermon and invited the congregation forward to view the corpse. He moved the flowers aside and had two of his deacons help him open up the casket. One by one, the people filed past and to their utter surprise, there was no body in the casket. Rather, what was in the casket was a big mirror and everyone who looked into the casket saw himself or herself in it as that sinner most assuredly on his or her way to hell if genuine repentance and change is not sought. Yes, the congregation got the message, but what about you? You see, saints, for many believers today, their entry point into faith and commitment to Christ is the promise of third John in verse two. Beloved, the Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And yes, any way you choose to look at this verse of scripture, it does present to us a good promise, and there is nothing wrong with this. Health and prosperity, however, are not the primary promise or purpose of scripture. Salvation is. But the perpetration of what can be described as lopsided teaching and understanding of scripture has clouded our ability to see the primary purpose of scripture as a salvation that makes eternity with Christ possible. No more, no less. Often enough, the only way to learn this lesson is by pain, not pleasure. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verses 2 to 5 says, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. See, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Today, I want to call your attention to what the Bible calls the song of fools. In Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, the Bible says, There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. You see, I remind you of this text because many of us, sincere believers that we try to be, do not realize how much and how often we sing, we hear, and dance the song of fools. We are being deceived by the devil himself, the one who from the beginning led the whole world astray, and he is still actively doing so. How do you mean, Pastor? Let me explain myself. You see, Paul, writing to the church in Rome, admitted as much, then when we as mankind professed ourselves to be wise, we inadvertently became fools. Accordingly, we behaved and acted in like manner. One such song of fools is the popular tune about sexual orientation. Listen, in Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 32, the Bible says, Refusing to know God, they soon didn't know how to be human either. Women didn't know how to be women. Men didn't know how to be men. Sexually confused, they abused and defiled one another. Women with women, men with men, all lost, no love. And then they paid for it. Oh, how they paid for it. 
emptied of God and love, godless and loveless, wretches, since they didn't bother to acknowledge God. God quit bothering them and let them run loose. And then all hell broke loose. Rampant evil, grabbing and grasping, vicious backstabbing. They made life hell on earth with their envy, wanton killing, bickering and cheating. Look at them, mean-spirited, venomous, fork-tongued, God-bashers, bullies, swaggerers, insufferable windbags. They keep inventing new ways of wrecking lives, my God. They ditch their parents when they get in the way. Stupid, slimy, cruel, cold-blooded. And it's not as if they don't know better. They know perfectly well they are spitting in God's face. And they don't care. Worse, they hand out prizes to those who do the worst things best. Terrible. I read recently that the most popular NBA sports t-shirt, which people, Christian and non-Christian, are buying the most, is that of a player who had publicly admitted he is gay. A British athlete recently came out to declare he was gay and he received a letter of support from the Prime Minister. We are being cleverly deceived and made to be excited about entertainment and sport and pleasure at all costs. The Oscars, the BET, MTV Awards, Major League Games, and what have you. The world sets the agenda now in everything, even for the church. They write the song of fools. We sing and dance the chorus. The content of their songs are aimed at convincing us that anything goes, that principles and values don't matter. For them, it is one love, one world, one God, one people, one destiny. Sadly, not many people are curious enough to find out what that destiny and destination is they are heralding. What a tragedy the deceiver has deceived us into. Gender neutrality, acceptable forms of sexual orientation, what tune will they sing next? How glad I was to read this comment in one Bible commentary recently. That any nation that justifies homosexuality or lesbianism as an acceptable lifestyle is in its final stages of moral corruption. How true. Direct, blunt and true. I could not agree more. But with the song of fools loud and all pervading, should we not be bothered? We should be. We must listen to the voice of truth warning us of the danger of the pleasure-loving, prosperity-focused consumer Christianity we have laid hold of and believed in. A teaching that talks of the love of God at the expense of the holiness of God, one that acknowledges the prosperity that is in Christ, yet fails to recognize the sacrifice and suffering that comes with being in Christ. Know this for a fact, brother. It is never one without the other. Listen and learn. Listen and live. For this is the song of wisdom, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 3, the very word of God, not the words of a sadist or a tyrant. Listen, sorrow is better than laughter, for sadness has a refining influence on us. Learn and live and prosper. He that endureth till the end shall be saved. Hold on to the truth. Distance yourself from the deception of fools, for the Lord will yet make you an instrument of praise upon the earth. It will continue to be well with you. My name is B.E. Ajala, and I thank you for watching and for partnering with me in this task of making ready a people prepared for the Lord. God bless you.